Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with episode 28 of Chart Watch, new release news, and music chat. Right, this um, this is an action-packed episode. There's quite a lot of things to cover, um, so please bear with me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an update on the new Now Spinning Magazine kind of campaign where we're trying to make sure that poly-lined inner sleeves are the D fault offering for all new vinyl releases. Um, last week, we launched the campaign. I've had loads of great comments, which I'm going to read out some of them um, during this show. Um, so that's going to be the last segment um, as I go through it. So the first segment, we're going to look at what's number one in the UK album charts and look at the split between CD and vinyl sales and anything else that's taken my interest in that chart. I'm also going to look at the indie album chart in the UK because uh, some of the things I've recently reviewed have popped in there. And also then I'm going to look at some new release news, some of the things that have caught my eye that I might be covering on the channel and on the website. And then I'm going to look at CD sales and vinyl sales in the USA. So we've recently looked at that well, several times in the UK because of the headline that vinyl out sells CD for the first time in 35 years. But actually when we looked at it under the under the bonnet, it was actually more to do with revenue more than units. But in the USA, is it the same? Well, stay tuned and find out. And then we'll look at, as I say, our campaign for polylined album inner sleeves. So let's dive straight in and look at the UK album charts. What is number one? Number one, as per usual in most weeks here, remember those days when things used to slowly go up the charts and eventually get to number one? Nowadays, it, everything just arrives there and then slowly slips away or quickly slips away a week later. So number one is no different. Straight in is the Lathams at number one with From Nothing to a Little Bit More, which is, as I say, just gone straight in on the Island Records label. The other uh, artist I'm going to look at is Eva Cassidy with the London Symphony Orchestra, who's gone in at number nine, and Genesis, who've gone in at number 23. Oh, and just catching my eye here is Feline by The Stranglers. A re-entry after 40-odd years in at number 58. So, what are the numbers for the Lathams? Well, from nothing to a little bit more on Island Records, this week's sales to get it to number one are 17,937. Physical sales of that were 15,672. So that was the majority, like it always is um, with, with the album sales, really. So if I just break that down, I'll break that 15,672 down into what made up the physical chart, which was 8,881 CDs, 5,149 vinyl albums. So CDs were ahead there of the vinylist case. And cassettes, do you want to know? Higher than you might expect, 1,642 cassettes and 1,218 digital downloads and 1,047 sales equivalent streams. Okay, Eva Cassidy. Um, she sadly passed away and didn't see any of this success. That her music has touched so many people. The complete voice of an angel. I, I, I remember seeing, um, it was over the rainbow, wasn't it? That film of her singing that song. It just melted just would melt any heart really and she said this is her 10th album that's gone in the charts since she sadly passed away um i hope wherever she's she knows people love her music um it's sold uh 5259 sales so far and the gorillas who are last week's number one i might as well say this have gone down to number 11 with 5054 sales and genesis with a CD box set, I went at number 23 with 3,481 sales. I don't have the numbers for the Stranglers at number 58, but I reckon that's probably between 1,500 and 2,000-ish, I imagine. I said I wanted to mention the indie album charts because it's a lovely thing to read out, especially when it's got some of your fave artists in. Eva Casti is number one. Uh, Porcupine Tree are at number seven, um, which is a re-entry with Deadwing. This is the Super Deluxe CD Blu-ray book version. Um, and I'm very tempted to get that. It's my favourite Porcupine Tree album. 
I just absolutely love it. So that's doing very well. Motorhead at number 12 with Everything Louder Forever, which is a best of. And then two albums I reviewed on the channel recently are both Slade and great albums. They are Nobody's Fools by um, the, both of these are on BMG, which got to number 16 and the amazing Kamikaze Syndrome, which got to number 18. I'm really hoping that because these albums are selling well, Slade back in the charts, um, that BMG now roll back a bit and continue, you know, whatever happened to Slade and also, you know, the 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 reunion albums that they've missed out to do this. I, I hope they do. That'd be great. Great, because I should be there to buy those. Right, reissues. Where shall I start? I'm going to start with Blackmore's Night. This is out. OK, um, so I'm a bit slow here and I'm a bit slow because I've decided on what version I'm going to get. I have this, The Shadow of the Moon, the 25th anniversary of this on CD. I remember buying it. It was so different to what. Well, it was different to be Deep Purple, but knowing Richie Blackmore and those of us who've grown up with him, I think he always wanted to do this. And um, his perfect kind of muse is, is Candice, really. Now, this is um, there are there's a. There's a black vinyl version. There's coloured vinyl versions. There's competitions. There's a there's a there's a DVD version. There's a version that comes with a seven inch single. It's a double vinyl album. The, there's so many different packages on this. And um, what I would recommend, because I've seen I've I've seen uh, Blackmore and and Candice unbox this on their own YouTube channel, and it looks great. And um, there's a couple of people in the Now Spinning Magazine Facebook community have also bought it already. It looks fantastic. I would recommend buying it directly from Blackmore's Night. There are so many different bundles and versions, and I think the, the album starts at about 30 quid, which I think f f when you look at it, it's a luxurious piece of stuff, um, art, um, that that I would I would get it from directly from them. I really would. Um, it, it looks really, really good. And it, it's a... It, it's. It's got some great songs. Like Ocean Gypsy is one of my one of my favourites, and it's all been remixed. So it's not just it's not just remastered. It sounds different as well. The other um, artist that I wanted to I mentioned I touched on this last week, but didn't have any detail. And it's Winger with their album called Seven, um, which is released on May the fifth. This is a twelve track album produced by Kip and recorded in Nashville. And it's the first new release since 2014's Better Days. And you can pre-order it now on CD, vinyl, and digital. Um, and they're also on tour. They're, I think they're heading to the UK for us UK peeps um, around uh, May, where they're supported by Steel Panther. Or maybe it's the other way around. That'll be interesting. And then with Tom Kiefer in the USA, that'll be probably... A, more interesting. Okay, right. What else have I got? Um, I have, there's a Billy Bragg. Now, if you're a Billy Bragg fan, on October the 27th, 2023, you'll have this arriving at your house. You might try and wait till Christmas, perhaps. Um, but I don't know if it's going to hang around. Um, right. So we have the Roaring Forty by Billy Bragg, 1983 to 2023, marks four decades of musical magic, political protest and heartfelt empathy. Um, it's a career spanning 14 CD box set, whoa, three LP and single LP sets as well. I've got a bit of breakdown here. Um, and it's compiled by Billy Bragg. So he's involved. It's not one of these things where the artist suddenly finds out about it and doesn't know anything about what's going on. There's a single disc, 13 song primer, an orange vinyl. For those of you who might think, I don't know, should I, shouldn't I? Although you could always stream to find out. A 40 song, three album collection in three shades of green vinyl. And it's also available as a two CD and digital set. And then, stand by, are you sitting down? A 14 CD box set containing more than 300 songs including from each of billy's 12 studio albums there are nine album b-sides singles session tracks rare live recordings collaborations unreleased material everything is on there um i could read i could read out the blurb that comes with that for the next 10 minutes but i'll put it on the website and i'm flicking through the pages now <laughs> it's massive okay but that's so you can start saving that's not till october 
Now, Cooking Vinyl, also behind that, the Billy Bragg set, are also behind this. And this is Killing Joke's live album, The Gathering, which is a limited edition on Coloured Vinyl and CD. This is from 2005. And you can stream this now if you want to know what it's like, but it's a really wild and enthusiastic and scary is the wrong word. Um, but they're on the, the it captures them at the at, on the edge. That's the audience and the band. It's just it's really, really electric. It really is. Um, and this reissue comes out. It is a 25th anniversary celebration. Um I believe it comes out on May the 26th and it's a two LP color vinyl gatefold sleeve printed in the sleeves, lyrics, photos, and the CD comes in a little mini uh, digi pack with a eight page booklet as well. So that's good. And then we have Yes and Lorena Kennett. Yes is Mirror to the Sky. And this is the follow up to the quest. Um, and Steve House says um, they've approached the album. That, with the continuity of the quest, but they haven't repeated themselves. So they're growing and moving forward. Now, this is available in a variety of formats. A deluxe transparent electric blue double vinyl two CD Blu-ray art book and poster edition. A two CD Blu-ray art book and extremely limited 180 gram transparent green double vinyl version with an exclusive postcard signed by Steve Howe. And that's available and will be released on May the 19th. It will be interesting to see how the year progresses with with the amount of different versions. And uh, some of these have got very small runs, 300, 500. You know, so you've got to be quick if you want them. Um, but I, but I, I'm going to leave, I don't have a script, but I'm just leaving the rails of this bit just for a second. Um, in the olden days, if you're going to buy an album, it came out and you bought it and you'd say to your mates, oh, have you got the new yes, yes album? And the answer was either yes or no. You either had it or you didn't have it. But now, for instance, if we think of Taylor Swift and you say to somebody, have you got, to a Swifty, have you got the new Taylor Swift album? Um, they may say, yes, I have. I've got eight, I've got eight copies. I've got, um, I bought the four versions on vinyl and then I bought, four versions on CD, and then I bought them again when the signed versions came out. Um, so instead of it being eight to 16 people who bought it, it's one person who bought all of those. Um, and obviously, this is either value for money because you're an Uber fan and this is what you really want, or it's kind of, in a way, taking advantage of the, the of the fans. Now, I don't think for one minute Taylor Swift does that at all. Her fans love this and they do that. But I do think there's only so many times you can do it, um, especially with the cost of living crisis and all the rest of it. So I think the amount, I do think, if you're a fan, I just want to buy the album. And, you know, the Porcupine Tree previous album had this, didn't it, where you there was, you had to buy nearly all of the different variants to get all the complete set of songs. So, you know, the way the marketing people might decide that, well, the vinyl is going to get that one, the CD is getting that, the box is going to get this extra track and those instrumental tracks will go on this. I don't think that is the way, that is not the way forward now. I've just read that out, what Yes are doing, but they didn't, it doesn't in any way say each format contains tracks that aren't available on, on the other format. So, but I think labels and artists need to be careful on how this is pitched to their respective fan base Lorena McKennett I love her music I've got all of her CDs I don't have anything by her on vinyl The Book of Secrets is actually one of my favorite albums by her and it has the Mummers Dance on it and um and it's a fantastic song and and so I am tempted this these are color vinyl versions um if there's a black vinyl version, I might go for that better. Um, Book of Secrets from 1997 and The Journey So Far, which is a best of. Um, that's on April the 14th. For uh, Cherry Red, anything new I've not mentioned before. Chris Squire, Fish Out of Water, has been reissued on vinyl. I do have it on vinyl and CD uh, and in 5.1 mix as well. But my vinyl version is quite wounded because it's from 1975. So... I might upgrade. Once again, the Barclay James Harvest, which I reviewed the CD Blu-ray box set, is also coming out on vinyl as well. 
Uh, Hanoi Rocks, H&E, The Days We Spent Underground, a 1981 to 1984 5 CD box set. Um, that looks interesting. Raven, uh, the new wave of British heavy metal band, uh, 3 CD Digipack is also out. And the only other thing I want to mention from Cherry Red, Oh, there's a Beverly Claven. I might have said this last week. Um, complete epic recordings with a signed print, I think, 1990 to 1999, 3 CD. But the main one is by Heinz. No, not the baked beans. Heinz was an artist from the late 60s. And his interest to me is that Richie Blackmore played um, quite a few sessions with him. And this is a five CD box set covering 1963 to 1966. So Blackmore might be there. There's a hundred unreleased tracks on this set. Now, an observation here is that um, for the first time from a cherry red press release, there are probably just as many vinyl releases than CD. Whereas normally with cherry red, it's 100% CD. So these are interesting times. I don't think there's anything else in my two, my new release schedule I need to mention at this stage, which means I can go straight on to CD and vinyl sales in the USA. And I must remember to say dollars, and I must remember to realise I'm talking millions, uh, whereas in the UK it's pounds and not always millions when I mention these numbers. So I'm just going to read this out, which is from the RI. AA um, official website. So I've not gone from a blog full of um, alarmist or over enthusiastic PR speak. This is actually from the official press um, release um, from the RIAA. So physical products. Revenue from physical music formats continue to grow after the remarkable resurgence in 2021. Total physical revenues of $1.7 billion were up 4% versus the prior year. Revenues from vinyl records grew by 17% to 1.2 billion. That's the 16th consecutive year of growth and accounted for a 71% of all physical format revenues. For the first time since 1987, some of you are thinking, here we go. Vinyl albums outsold CDs in units. This is units. So not revenue. These are physical discs going over the counter or in the post. And it was 41 million versus 33 million. Okay, so after the 2021 rebound for the CD, um, obviously that was the COVID period, revenues from CDs fell by 18% to 483 million dollars. Now. Before all of you CD fans start to man the lifeboats and think it's all over and we're all doomed, CD sales were worth $483 million. Now, there aren't many businesses that can walk away from $483 million. So even if it goes down again, we're still talking millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. So the CD is not going to vanish um, the same way that vinyl didn't vanish when we were at this other orbit, um, you know, about 30 odd years ago when it was going in the opposite direction. Vinyl didn't die out and CDs are not going to die out. Is anything going to die out? Uh, yeah, I think it is. And I think it will be the downloaded music bit because I don't understand why people do that. Because um, if you stream and you subscribe, which has already gone up by 10% again, and it's worth like nine nine thousand one hundred and seventy nine million billion probably dollars that people do. You can just download things onto your phone and take it in the car because you don't have a CD player. It's fine. But permanent downloads, people that just want to buy a download, buy a file, has gone down another 20 percent. It seems to go down 20 percent every year. Um, so technically it won't exist soon, uh, but it really has dropped. It really has. But CDs were worth five hundred and eighty five million dollars uh, in twenty twenty one. And as I say, it's four hundred and eighty two million dollars um, for for twenty twenty two. So the number of units sold was thirty three million CDs, forty six million the year before. And final. This is interesting. 
because it is it's exciting news, but it's interesting how it's put across. Um, so Vina went up by three point two percent. Really, uh, is that I got that right? Yes, um, um, yeah, that's right. So in twenty twenty one. Um, there were 40 million albums sold, and in 2022, there were 41 million albums sold. So yes, it's gone up a million, but it's not like it's not like it's not like a Saturn V rocket. It's, it's starting to level off, which is why when we come on to the next bit of my talk, why it is important. In fact, we're going we're going to go there now because okay, here we go. Vinyl is doing well, and I'm buying a lot more of it. I am multi-format man. Somebody said it was like saying you had some kind of superpower. It's, this is a job for multi-format man. Um, maybe. And lots of us are enjoying vinyl. In fact, lots of people on the Now Spinning Magazine Facebook private community are buying more vinyl than they've done before. But, but we're also buying CDs. Um, I've got Fog Out to review and... And this by Jade Warrior, uh, a very obscure prog band uh, from the UK. Oh, I can't wait to review this. It's great to have these. They're not on vinyl, um, but a lot of things are on vinyl. But the prices are going up. Um, I'm seeing, you know, 30 to 45 pounds for sometimes a single album. Some some of these things are nuts. This is a luxury item, as I said last week, and this is why Nasbini Magazine has launched its campaign to make the Polylined inner sleeve, the default offering for all new vinyl albums. Okay, I'm going to read out some comments soon, but just a recap for those of you who didn't watch last week's or don't know what's going on. This is good. Polylined slides in and out really easily. Jimi Hendrix, I don't think I showed this one last week. Not so good. Just a plain paper thing, and as I take the, the record out, there were little bits of paper dust and white specks on my new record. Somebody might say, well, just clean it. Why should I have to? Why should I? And if I'm 23 years of age and I've got, I'm living with my mum and dad, I haven't got room for a record cleaning machine that's £500 sitting at the end of my bed. I just want to buy a record, put it on, play it and put it away, put it on and play it. I'll use a little felty thing to, to, clean, the, to clean the grooves, but why should I have to do that? Okay. What else have I got here? An album I'm going to be reviewing soon when the box set comes for my birthday. Um, but there's the vinyl one. Polyline Sling. Gorgeous. Curveball here. Tori Amos. Um, what do people think of these very hard picture inner sleeves? The record comes in and out, but you can hear it scrape along it, can't you? The ruts I showed last week, that's really hard paper card i don't like that at all i showed sabbath last week so i'm just showing this for continuity see how hard it is to get that out um and again it's one of these paper sleeves with six of paper on and in case some of you are thinking um say i can't even get that in 180 gram vinyl probably in a paper sleeve that was designed for 140 gram vinyl in an album cover that probably thinks it's 120 gram gold and nothing quite fits um cherry red did this um which is very hard to get out and again paper sleeve but if i'm not picking on cherry red or bmg because equally depending on what you what you buy so I'm not I'm not picking on specific labels here because BMG they will use these cheap powdery paper sleeves like everyone else does as well, um, and you've just seen Cherry Red have done it. But equally, BMG sometimes use polyline sleeves, and this is Cherry Red, which I showed you last week. Polyline sleeve, um, and then of course at the top end, which I'll, the review for this is due very soon, is Craft Recordings with their anti-static archival sleeves, which of course. Many of us record collectors, music fans, because we're music fans first, um, because we play them. We play these records because we love them. We paid with our money that we've earned when we could have, you know, that money probably um, sometimes other members of the family might say you could have put, you could have used that money for something else. So we're buying this luxury item and we want to play it. It isn't going to sit on a shelf and never be opened. Um, if you are one of those people, 
need to get a grip. Um, this is a this is a place where we play and enjoy music. So, so when I asked this question last week, I got a lot of responses. So I'm just going to read out some of them. And if you're on the YouTube channel, you can find them under the chart watch episode 27 list from uh, last week. Um, so I'll just have a look at some of these. And um, Jerry um, says, Phil, you're spot on concerning record sleeves. All of my vinyl albums from the 60s and 70s have stiff paper inner sleeves, which are a pain to handle all around. Thank you for another great chart watch. Um, Andy says, I completely agree that a good quality polyline sleeve should be standard for all releases. I'm working through replacing all of my substandard inner sleeves on my collection. And I'd like to think in the future, this would not be necessary for new purchases. This is another aspect of putting the fan first. Phil, you're absolutely correct. Oftentimes I will buy an album to replace one that is older and one has become crackly due to many years of playing. I don't expect that a new album I bought to replace an older one is going to sound worse than the one I'm trying to replace. It's extremely frustrating. Polylined or archival sleeves are definitely the way to go. On the sleeves debate last year, this is Simon Big Small. I bought a cleaning machine and set myself the task of washing my vinyl collection, about 1,500 albums. I bought new anti-static liners to replace any card or paper ones. And all I would think I was doing was what a waste of money spent on empty sleeves that could have been spent on acquiring more music had the record companies thought ahead. Yes, individually, they are relatively inexpensive, but not so much when you need them in such quantity. Tight sleeves are a nightmare. But that, that applies also to obviously cheap CD sleeves as well. Um, Clive says, I like the polyline paper sleeves best of all. I feel disappointed if I buy an LP and it simply has a non-polyline sleeve, especially when the label has gone to the trouble of remastering or remixing the record. And, you know, absolutely very, very true. And uh, Chris here says the inner sleeve debate is somewhat annoying considering the price you pay for an LP. I bought a good few packs of poly inner sleeves over the years. And if I buy 50 for around 15, 18 pounds, that's about 30 to 40 p sleeve. That's not a lot for the record companies, especially if they would buy them in their thousands. The record is an expensive item and it should come in a protective sleeve. Please take note, record companies. And if you go on to this, these will all be transferred onto the web website as well. But if you look through this, and, and again, I encourage you to comment on this uh, episode of Chart Watch and on the old one as well. But record companies, it's obvious, isn't it, really? And if you're thinking, oh, it's going to cost extra, you know, it's going to put our overheads up, you know, second time of saying this, right? Just get a grip for Christ's sake. Um, it's added value, isn't it? You can actually use it, as I said last week in your advertising blurb, you know, comes on 180 gram vinyl. And again, it doesn't need to. 140 grams fine, you know. Um, but if whatever it comes, you, you say it's remastered. It comes in a gatefold sleeve. It comes with a signed print. It comes with an archival anti-static inner sleeve. It comes with polylined inner sleeves. I mean, it's it, it's part it's going to make people think, oh, that's good. Because why should music fans have to buy these? I and mean, I don't think we're going to affect covers thirty three or spin care any 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 anything like that. People, there's enough people out there with older albums, and where they're replacing them, and they buy things at second hand market, and they buy these in its sleeves. But for new releases, for new vinyl releases, please include a polyline inner sleeve or an archival anti static sleeve as standard. And as I say, put it in your adverts that your album you're releasing comes with this. You know, actually, in your marketing departments, whatever, when you get the albums and you got them in the box and it was look lovely, you know, actually sit around the table and actually all look at them and take the records out and have a look at the actual. Look at this. It won't even it won't even come out. I have to pull it out of the paper sleeve because the vinyl is too thick for the this paper sleeve and if i look at it you probably can't see from here there are tiny little white spots and just a light swirl of mark where that has affected the record and this particular record is from a box set that was about 55 pounds so surely it could be standard so let me know what you think we're on a mission here and um 
as a, as you know, I love CDs, I love all formats, and I love vinyl. But don't you know? Don't kill the thing you're trying to revive. Um, it's great that we got record state record store day coming up and the the publicity for that and i know lots of uh you know people are really looking forward to it lots of my local record shops are really excited about it but the quality of the product has got to be up there to be worth the price point that's what i'm trying to get across so thank you for watching and thank you for supporting now spinning magazine thank you for all your comments keep them coming email become a patron uh, become a supporter of, of now spinning magazine join the facebook group join twitter instagram wherever wherever you'll find me and it's great having you aboard and thank you for all your encouragement and all your kind comments and stay safe remember music is the healer and the doctor keeps spinning those discs and i shall see you very very soon <laughs>